Kane a kingpin now? Kane he, he that Trump? dude. He that dude. He that dude. Oh, no, look. <laughs> look, I, I enjoyed him getting his face back. He that dude, Moochie. He's that dude. But, Moochie, we, we end on the conversation. And since you got here, everybody, Moochie has a great YouTube channel. She puts out a lot of power content. Her link is in the description. Go check her out. And be sure to check me out right here on Instagram. There's a podcast that comes with this show. And I also have TikTok. You can check me out at Life Games One. Go check us out. Now, Moochie, not to be outdone, we have another guest that's going to come through for a hot minute. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, he has the most intimidating masculine voice in all America. Uh -oh. When he gets on the channel, all the men really get quiet because his voice, his baritone voice, supersedes our voice. And when he's ready, we're going to bring him in. And ladies and gentlemen, the brother I'm talking about, y'all know him, the big homie B. Avery. What's up, B. Avery? What's going on? What's going on? How y'all doing? Yeah, we good, man. How about yourself? Pretty good, man. Happy Friday to you, Moochie. Happy Friday, Lamont. Happy, Happy Friday. Friday to everybody in the chat. Thanks for having me. No, of course, man. Happy Friday. And Moochie and B. Avery, make sure you both are streaming this on your channel so that y'all can get some of this SEO going. Yes, all right, sir. all right. I'm doing it. And uh, Moochie, your skin is popping, man. It's glowing. I know. Yeah. Glowing? <laughs> you know yeah. Yeah. Not the... Not the Barry White of YouTube voice. No. Uh -uh. You telling me that? Look, you got that, that smooth voice when what you, you just talking, talking woman's panty drawers on? I'm trying, you know, that, 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 that it's getting to me. You know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to receive the compliment. Thank yes. you. Y'all, she's been drinking her water, y'all. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, I have. Yes, I have. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? you got. <laughs> Look, Moochie, let me tell you something. When when you can get skin that has the dark texture yours has mm -hmm. and it looks glow like that, and don't nothing look better on the planet Earth on a female than that skin tone with flawless skin. Nothing looks better. Look, nothing. It looks like chocolate you want to lick, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I know that's and, and, right. All night and, long. One, and, and one of our people on this show got a sweet tooth for that uh -oh. chocolate. We'll get to his butt in a minute. Got that mm. old sweet tooth. But um, let me get y'all in on this conversation. And so here's the professor we was talking about that's probably going to be the wife of Tate. And I enjoy, I'm loving when they do these classroom dis discussions, need versus greed. And my question to you two as the panel, I'll start with you, Mushi. What kind of trouble is Tate going to put this woman through? Oh, she's going to find... You know what? I, I want to know a backstory on her because I want to know if she's a cop. Because remember, keep in mind, Tate was a police officer. Is she from the police officer past? You know what I'm saying? Good point. Yep, yep, so, yep. So yep. We, I, I hope she's not on the low, like on some, like, let me see what's going on here because it's too much stuff. We're going to put you here and see what come, what happens. Okay, so, okay. But I could see her being the perfect political wife for him. Perfect. I could see it too. I could see her knocking it out the park. B. Avery, what you got for it? Um, good one, uh, Mucha. I didn't think of that myself. Uh, but mm -hmm. that's a possibility that she could have had a cop life back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, she looks good for her age, but she is older, clearly. Mm -hmm. Um, so who knows? I mean, people do go through those career uh those career changes. Yeah, you usually know, a uh, lot of them become lawyers. Right, right, right. Like, I, like um, Professor Megram. Mm -hmm. I do think that she will look good for the wife, whether it's for real, for real, or just for optics. Is, is that what they say? And all of that good stuff. Um, but it seems like she has some wisdom, too. I don't I think, Lamont, you were saying, like, what kind of trouble is La, is uh, uh, Rashad going to put her through? I don't think she's a uh, I don't think she, I think she's too strong to play those games i think she'll kind of check them in a way i don't know actually i take that back i don't know because it seemed like she had the power it seemed like mm -hmm. he was a, it seemed like she was a it seemed like he was a little bit more excited about their meeting than she was right and then, uh right. you know she probably um you know tay tay probably you know tay has his way with women now but it probably wasn't like that back in the day probably, you know he's probably a nerd or geek you know probably didn't have any game and huh. You know, she she you know chewed them up and spit them out or something. I don't know. It's possible, um, but you you know, it's they had something. So 
we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to see, man. But I I think she uh I think in a respectful way, I think she's been around the block, just meaning she she has experience. Um, mm-hmm. you know, she has some wisdom. I'm with that, definitely. I agree hundred percent, man. It it did seem like she was kind of she was melancholy in that meeting when she saw Tate. And it could have been because Tate was off putting with the girl that looked like she just came from the strip club. Yeah. And it could be that she felt sorry for the girl because Tate basically was disrespecting that girl right into the professor's face. Whatever the case may be, it was something about the professor that grabbed Tate. And it seems like, like you said, and Moochie said, she will have plenty of backbone when it comes to him. But I still feel like Tate, we know he grimy. We know that he'll slip a banana in that tailpipe quick. And I think that he's going to get her caught up in something. But I can't wait to see. Mm. And B, this one's for you, my brother. Effie and Diana. I mean, got to be more careful. Effie was giving Diana some tips on, you know, how she can get her books and things paid. And then she mentioned, you know, Sometimes those TAs have extra books, and that's who they're looking at right now. B. Avery, what is the intent with Effie and Diana's relationship? Because we, some things are going to happen, and I'm wondering, is Effie true to Diana, or is Effie using Diana? Um, I think neither. I, okay. think, I think Effie is just playing the cool, uh, doing her thing, you know, staying in her lane, playing her own role. Um I don't think she has any type of animosity or beef with Diana. Um, Cause if that's the case, she's winning right now. And mm. um, I would say, I don't think that, you know, I mean, Diana's not being a hater or nothing. I mean, she's a little bit jealous, uh, which is, you know, somewhat normal. I mean, she had, she liked to reek and, you know, she went in the back and, you know, she, you know, she didn't want to make it awkward. So she went back there. So that's fine. But, when I was watching this scene right here, I was just happy that they were getting along and they weren't beefing. They, it wasn't like a little cat fight or whatever. I, I think that's um, pretty cool or whatever, you know. Um, yeah. Like you pull that image up. I mean, it's look, you know, it's kind of normal to get jealous. If you like somebody and you see them with somebody else, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, you're going to feel some type of way. And she handled it like a woman to me, you know. Um, she ended you know, up looking like the shining behavior. You're like, damn, I'm thinking she about to come out and kill somebody. I mean. Hiding all in the closet. I I I, <laughs> I asked Miss Cantu the same thing, like you know, did did uh Diana make the best move? I, I think so because she didn't want to make it awkward, you know, um potentially. So you know, I don't but know. The, the, Mucci, they know each other though. They know they know each other. So how would it have that's, been awkward? That's true. That's true. At the at the candy store, like, did she not want Reek seeing her talking to the TA guy, like, or she didn't want, or maybe she felt weird that she's having to actually work a real job and didn't want Reek to see that. Talk to me, Moochie. I think that's what it was. <laughs> okay. And keep in mind, you know, she was, she was, she's like the spoiled little girl. So, you know, everybody treated her like a princess, but now her dad is like, nah, you got to work for your books. So I, and, she, and I Moochie. think she, she wanted to avoid them because of that. But look, I think her and Effie going to get along. And look, we might see Tariq get a threesome. I'm just yes. saying. Hey, I'm here for it. I've been, I've been begging Even mom, for she it, had like okay? a little scene last season, Effie, yeah. with the girl. I'm yeah. just saying. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say this to y'all because I want Moochie to hear this good. I'm if I'm going to see a threesome, uh-oh, that's the one I want to see. I do not want to see Jenny, Cooper Sacks, and Blanca Rodriguez. Oh, hell no, bro. Look, I would want to see Bushandria. Oh yeah, <laughs> Moochie, you since you the female expert up here, is Bushandria's body real? I don't know. I don't I'm, know. She's young. Let her have her fun. <laughs> let her have her fun and let it wiggle when she walk. <laughs> I mean, well, she, you, you got you got you got you got to finish though. You got to you got to finish the threesome. Bushandria, who else? Oh, Bush- yeah, Oh, you want to hear? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. Think we want to know. Effie. Okay, Bassandra, Effie, and Diana. Oh no, I don't want. I, don't, I, don't, I don't, we gotta add a. We gotta add a poll in there. Okay, so oh, we, we do. <laughs> yeah, we gotta add a stick with the boat. <laughs> we ain't gotta have no fishing <laughs> pole up the... in that joint. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! All right, Mooji, this one's for you. 
Uh, how did you, how did you like the chess move Braden was pulling? So Braden done went and got this boy fired because he found a sister who down for the movement. Mm -hmm. She woke woke in the good way, not in the pejorative way, ladies and gentlemen. And this man was getting on her nerves. So Braden put some stuff on his computer, went and found some damn tiki torches in New York City of all places. <laughs> made made him <laughs> made him look like he's down with the Trump Make America Great Again. Got her fired. Next thing I know, Braden getting some kiki and some hee hee in the elevator. Floor is yours, Moochie. I think Braden is the perfect opportunist. He saw this as an opportunity to bring his mans in. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. liked it. He finessed yeah. it. He, he, he finessed it and we never, I didn't see it coming to the end. Me and neither. I'll be honest, y'all. Wait, I was like, oh, he was behind this. Mm -hmm. I, I was like, damn, Braden. Braden done got smart quick, okay? Real quick. What'd you think about this Braden thing, B. Avery, and how he quickly came up with a plan to get Reek up in this Western Holdings. Uh, I thought it was shady. I didn't. Uh, I didn't necessarily like it. I. Uh, I mean, everybody, you know, does. I mean, they got characters murdering each other and stuff like that. So everybody bad. But I didn't like this from Braden. Uh, I mean, I'm glad that he got some ass from Miss Kiki. Mm -hmm. Me too. Uh, you know, I'm not hating, but damn, that was uh, kind of easy. But you know, hey, thank you. You know, Thank you. It's, I, I just didn't it. But I mean, hey, more power to him, you know. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not going to hit on the brother, you know. No. Um, but So that's cool. But, you know, he went to her, hey, do you want me to go to HR? And she was like, no, I'm good. And then he took it upon himself to plant evidence. Um, I don't know. I just thought that was a bit. I mean, I don't like the guy anyway that got fired. But I just still think that was kind of whack for him to do that. And also, uh, how, how, how can we trust Braden? Because he the one finessing Bashandria to take the uh, the internship to get him to have the internship at the Westons. And yeah, he is calculating, you know, but uh, he going to bite off a little bit more than he can chew eventually and going to uh, mess up the algorithm. He going to mess up the flow with something slipping up like, oh, man, I just wanted to sell an extra brick, man, and impress you, Tariq and Kane. And he going to fuck something up, mess something up. On this one, B. Avery, I really feel like the the ends justified the means for Brayden because Brayden staged this whole little coup just so he could convince Reek to let them sell product on Wall Street. And that move is going to make them richer than they've ever been, even though he done it in a dastardly way. Um, he shouldn't have got old boy fired. Hell, he contributed to getting the personal trainer killed who didn't look like a personal trainer, if you want my personal opinion. I mean, but anyway, you know, Braden orchestrated a lot of chess pieces in order to get the king, who is Reed, to make moves. And don't you go ahead. Uh, what I do like is the message that he did send Kiki, like, hey, shouldn't to recap out, set, set up the meeting in the conference room? That was smart. I like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Other than that, though, I thought it was shading, but yeah. Just had to clarify. Well, when. when when um, Tariq went in that that room, he saw how them boys in there snorting cocaine like they popping Tic Tacs. Like, mm -hmm. this, just, <laughs> bruh. And Reek couldn't, he couldn't resist then. Then they go to the little strip club, see white boys just spraying money left and right. Reek's like, yeah, I'm going to get this. Yeah. Any event, that leads us to exactly what we was just talking about. So this is the threesome behavior. We can get Kiki... And Brashandria in the threesome, you know, you know, that's what we can do. And so mm. this one goes back to you on this one, Moochie. Okay. Tate didn't tell Tariq why he got rid of him, nor did he tell him Brashandria was going to take the job. And Brashandria got a little, got she, she popped off at the mouth looking all nice and chocolate and said, no, nah, Reek, don't be talking to me like that. Do you think that Tate is going to get Brashandria entangled in something? I see it coming. Oh, I hope not. I hope not. I, and, and keep in mind, um, I warned Tate about what, what type of women he messing with. So I hope he doesn't cross the line and mess with this girl. I think he, he is. Yeah, because remember he, he said. Is. and, and Don't sleep with your intern. Yeah, so I, you know, I hope it's nothing crazy. 
What you got on this behavior? I think we're going to see short man. Short man Tate be getting a whole lot of draws, but you know, I'm, I'm here for it. Here for it. Yeah, I don't I don't see that. I'm, I'm with Moochie. Um, I mean, she does look good right there, but I just don't see it at all. That would be uh, more surprising than Kiki and Brayden hooking up. Uh, what? Yeah, Ooh. I just, um, I don't think that's going anywhere. Let me like, ask you this, B. Avery. What's up? What if she's walking to the back of that desk and he get a look at that, you know, them cakes back there? Because <laughs> look, uh, everybody talking about the cakes now. So, you know, he, Duncan sure, Hines. Pretty, yeah. I'm pretty sure he and I already got a good look, uh, to be honest with you. You know, as soon as That's she walked probably in. That's why she got the job. You know, yeah, Ray, I know. Remember, Ray, she was one of his students. Yes. I mean, I, yeah. I guess it could happen. I just didn't see that. I didn't think I didn't see it. I didn't think about it till now. So that's just yeah. that's wild. That's, I just thought about seeing the odd woman wanting him. Yeah. And yeah. The, and it, yeah. that's when it was like ding. <laughs> like think, think about it like this, be Avery. Stephen Ott warned him. Brashandria is in the same class as the person we think is gonna be his play play wife. Mm -hmm. That's just that's a writer's dream of drama, right there in that little circle. A writer's that, dream of drama. True, true. But the way that, uh, what did you call her? Uganda Forever? Is that what you said? Wakanda yeah, Uganda Forever. Forever. Oh, yeah. Uganda Forever. Um, the way she had Tate shook and or, or frozen in this in this spot like a deer caught in a head of headlights, I don't mm -hmm. think he gonna, I don't think he would mess it up. Okay. I, just don't. okay. I, I mean, okay. if it was anybody else, he'd be like, he, he, like, yes, let me see what I can do. Mm, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I think uh, I think he's trying to not mess that one up or fumble again. I, you know, I can see that. I can see that because because she's Uganda, Uganda forever is like she's a real G. She's a woman's woman. Like I, I can see she's not going to be playing that mess. She's the type that lay down a strict line and she'll walk away from your behind. And yeah. I can see him like, no, nah, I need you, especially if he gets to winning. And we expect Tate. To be get back in this thing and probably win and be a congressperson, so yes. we'll see. We'll and see. people in the chat, what we what we're seeing, AKA, is um, you know, um, a man will only do what you allow him to do. Pretty you know? much, pretty much, and and women too. <laughs> women too. So it goes, it cuts both ways. Everybody mm -hmm. has a point of no return, and that's <laughs> and that's the point. Right. <laughs> All right, this one's for you, my man, B. Avery. So the saga between Drew and Booty, I mean, Everett. Me. <laughs> uh -uh. That's messed up, man. I, 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 look, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get rid of those old habits I had with him from the first season, okay? I had a nickname for him. I saw the error of my ways, and I'm not going to refer to that man with that nickname no more. But Everett wanted Drew to be there to support him as he's going to Oakland. He's about to get him a deal. And Drew has had issue after issue. He stood this man up time and time again. And this was no different. Drew gets beat up by a fake-ass GTG member, couldn't show up for Drew, and Everett done broke up with Drew again. So you know what that means, B. Avery? That means we're going to have makeup sex with these two. Oh. Uh -oh. For sure. For sure. But how do you see this playing out? Is this going to finally be the year Everett is going to die, my brother B. Avery? Um, maybe. I didn't see that. Um, I know that Kane was talking to Lorenzo about Everett possibly dying. Yeah. Uh, because mm -hmm. I think earlier in the episode, he's like, you know, when he tried to call Drew, he's like, probably what they do to Everett. You know, when we was at the penthouse in the first episode, uh, Drew showed up and brought Everett for him to see. So what I was thinking was Everett was kind of smart to get rid of Drew because he don't want to be caught in the crosshairs. And so he's going to be out the picture. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I was like, good, because I am i wasn't rooting for the relationship anyway. It was just kind of whack to me. Mm. Um, you know, like it's, it was too much fighting in between them. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. so I kind of just felt like they was forcing it. I mean, I don't I don't know how difficult it is for homosexual men to date. But it only it seemed like one of the main reasons why they were dating because it was uh, uh, for a lack of options. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong. I have no idea if you know all my gay brothers out there. Let me know if I'm you know in the ballpark or not. But uh, I wasn't rooting for them, and um, I don't think Everett's gonna die. Um, if he did, 
you know, I won't lose him. I didn't just, I didn't really care for him. I just, he was, uh, I just didn't like him anyway. So um, we'll, we'll see though. But, you yeah. know, I'm not rooting for him to die, but if he does, I, you know. No I, sweat. I, yeah, no sweat. No sweat. So, Moochie, what B. Avery is talking about them, they was on that struggle love. That's the kind Ooh. of love they had, that struggle love. And not only is the struggle love, one person is having to kind of shield it from his family. And the other person's like, man, the hell with that. Let's just be open and free and free. So what do you see happening with this progression between Everett and Drew over this season? You know what? They was watching the penthouse. They might start questioning people, and he's on the list already to be that was questioned before. So he might be on that list again where they might have to cut his water off. You know? You, so you see, that's what I'm saying. That's that's what I'm saying. Because you yeah. you you see how Kevin Whiteman is operating. Mm-hmm. You see and how he's he moving. He, so he's he's really out there to get them. So he's going to pull the weakest link, and he is one of them. That he's going to hold that that contract where – I don't know if he's on the – is he in the NBA? Going to he's the NBA? Going, yeah, he's yeah, probably going he's to gonna the hold, NBA. They're going to try to hold that over his head. Man, hell no. <laughs> hell, hell no. <laughs> Everett, now, you get be, that Everett, contract. Could be, it could be for a fetch, but I could be right. Moochie, you, you, <laughs> you in a good spot because Everett can get that contract and get all the men he wants. You know, forget mm-hmm. a Drew. You have with all the Drews. Yes, you you get easy access to athletic bodies mm-hmm. right all there the in the locker. Room. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. All of them. <laughs> all the so, news. <laughs> we want to hear from y'all though. Post your comments on what you think is going to happen with Everett and Drew. Don't forget, we all have YouTube channels. Link is in the description for all of us. There's a podcast that comes up with this. It'll be going up in a few minutes. And you can also follow me on uh, the Life Gains TikTok. I'm starting to grow a little bit over there, y'all. So come and check a brother out. Come check a brother out. Let's do it. Moochie, this one is for you, my sister. All right. Evelyn. And you know I got a soft spot for her because I grew up watching New York Undercover. So when Mm. I see her, it it makes me smile. She came back to bless Monet with some money because she was thankful for the way Monet was there for her. But remember... She was talking about Frank and what's happening. And Kevin White Man has stopped her, mo- um, um, Moochie. So talk to me about what's going to be the story art with Evelyn this season. And is she going to be an ally or will she turn on the, the Tejada family? Is it friend or foe? She might end up being a foe, y'all. Because we don't know if Whitman's going to tell her or if he, if we know about, if they say, he was the last person she met with because remember that's the that's the body that drew had yeah yeah so the question is will we will we see something crazy with them like oh no that's kane's body that's right kane got that body my bad but um we we might we're gonna see what's gonna happen with this it, are they gonna try to bring that angle where they gonna be like you know he was the last person, the Tejadas was the last person they was with. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that, that we don't, we could see if something like that happens because I always saw her taking out somebody in the Tejada family for some reason. I, did I see too. her as a threat. I see her as, as like, you know, she, she still don't know for sure, but she's still trying to feel situations out. If so, I've yeah. seen her taking out anybody, Mucha, it'd be Lorenzo. Oh, um, yeah, that's who I think it's going to be. Okay. okay. B. Avery, what do you think about Evelyn and where you think they're going with her story? Uh, Well, first, man, I got to say thanks for the, you know, reminding me of New York Undercover. Uh, okay. Because for I sure. grew up with that show, too. Man, I had to sneak in and watch it. Um, and my parents didn't say I couldn't watch it, but I know they really wouldn't approve of it. But I learned so much from that show, man. Uh, Mine, too, B. Me, it exposed me to a lot of stuff because I was kind of sheltered. Um, you remember the music on the show? The I do. Music. I do. It was it was nice. The horns. Uh, it was a saxophone or something. Or yeah. The it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but to be honest, man, I did not pick up on any of those theories that y'all came up with. I'm kind of um, kind of forgot how big Ellen 
Evelyn plays into the story. I just don't remember why they're making a point to say her sons are dealing drugs. What's up, Reggie? Yeah, man. Um, I don't know. I have nothing here. I, I think that the money, that's true too. I think mm -hmm. that the money she was giving Monet is maybe because she, she does feel bad. Maybe the, she she did give a Whitman, white man, as you say, uh, some information <laughs> or whatever. And she's trying to Ooh. save face. I don't know, man, but I have no clue where this can go. Uh, but she didn't pop up for no reason. It's going to have to come circle back around some way. So I'm just going to have, I'm going to look out for it. I'm going to look out for it. Yeah, man. Um, this is what I like. Some of y'all know I'm taking this writing class. And, uh, and now, and as part of the class, the different things that make up a story, they're kind of telling me to watch out for and the different things I, I, I look at. And, she is more than a plot device, is what they would say in the class. She is a plot assister. So what is she, something in this story plot she's going to do to assist because we've seen her too much now. She's came in, she done said hey to Monet, she done said hey to Lorenzo, and then she tried to offer money that Monet didn't take, but she left it on the table. And so I, I, I want to see what she do. At some point in time, they're going to need her or she's going to need them, and it could be chaotic. But I'm interested to see where they go. You guys let me know what you think about Fine Evelyn and what they're going to do with her character. Sure. What, what do y'all think the best guess was for how much money that is? $5,000, $10,000? How, how, how much do you think it is? Let me look it's, at the knot. I'm about to say, <laughs> B, I can't see a face on the knot. I, I can't see a face, but... If if I could see a face, I'd be able to tell you. I'm assuming it's hundreds, and with a roll that big, that's about ten G's. Mm -hmm. Easy, I, I easy can see that. Easy, okay. yeah, yeah, man. I mean, to just roll up. And did y'all notice how they kept making the point, as Reggie said, that her sons are are they dealing, they doing good up uptown, whatever. Um, that could come back. That could come back to bite somebody too. Lorenzo mess around and. He's selling these new drugs and stepping on their territory. We'll see. We'll see. That's a good one, too. We'll see.